الحمد للہ رب العالمین اللہ مسلی علیہ سیدنا محمد و علیہ آل محمد کما صلی تو وسلم تو بارکت علیہ ابراہیم و علیہ آل ابراہیم فی العالمین انکا حمید مجید اما بعد تک اللہ عباد اللہ Dear brothers and sisters, today we are going to discuss about Surat Al-Nas. Surat Al-Nas and Surat Al-Falak were revealed together in Mecca when the opposition of Quraysh against Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very hard and intense. Later on, when Medina, in Medina storms of opposition were raised, by the hypocrites, Jews, and polytheists, the Holy Prophet was instructed to recite these two surahs, Surah Al-Nas as well as Surah Al-Falak. And when magic was worked on him, and his illness grew intense, Gibril alayhi salatu was salam came and instructed him by Allah's command to recite these various surahs. The conditions under which these two surahs were sent down in Makkah we need to discuss. As soon as the Prophet ﷺ began to preach the message of Islam, it seemed as though he had provoked all classes of the people around him. As his message spread, the opposition of the disbelieving Quraysh also became more and more intense. As long as they had any hope that they would be able to prevent him from preaching his message by throwing some temptation in his way or striking some bargain with him. Their hostility did not become very active. But when Prophet ﷺ made them upset and disappointed completely that he would not effect any kind of compromise with them in the matter of faith and in Surah Al-Kafirun they were plainly told I do not worship those who you worship nor are you worshippers of him whom I worship for you is your religion and for me is mine. <clears throat> the families whose members had accepted Islam were burning with rage from within against Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were casing him and holding secret consultations to kill him quietly in the dark of the night so that the Bani Hashim, the family of Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could not discover the murderer and take revenge. And they took the support of magicians and magic and charms were being worked on him so as to cause his death or make him fall ill or become mad and shaitans from among the men and jinn spread on every side so as to whisper one or another evil into the hearts of the people against Mustafa, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Quran brought by him so that the people became suspicious of him and fled him. There were many people who were burning with jealousy against him because they could not tolerate that a man from another family flourishing and become prominent in the society. Such were the conditions when the Quran, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam was commanded to tell the people قُلْ عَوْدُ رَبِّي الْفَلَقُ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقُ وَمِنْ شَرِّ وَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَاسَاتِ فِي الْوَقَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ قُلْ عَوْدُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ من شر الاسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس. This is similar to what the Prophet Musa عليه الصلاة والسلام was told to say when Pharaoh had expressed his design before the full court to kill him. وقال موسى إني أذت بربي وربكم من كل متكبر لا يؤمن بيوم الحساب. I have taken refuge with my Lord and your Lord against every arrogant person who does not believe in the day of judgment. Inni uttubi rabbi wa rabbikum antar jumun. I have taken refuge with my Lord and your Lord lest you should assail me and stone me. On both occasions these prophets, Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well as 
Musa alayhi salatu was salam, they were confronted with well equipped, resourceful and powerful enemies. On both occasions, they stood firm on their message of truth against their strong opponents, whereas they had no material power on the strength of which they could fight them. And on both occasions, they utterly they did not give any importance to the threats and dangerous plans and hostile devices of the enemy. But they are saying that we have taken refuge with the Lord of the universe against you. Clearly, such firmness, such sort of firmness and steadfastness can be shown only by the person who has the conviction that the power of his Lord is the supreme power, that all the powers of the world are nothing and are insignificant against him. And that no one can harm the one who has taken his refuge with Allah. Only such a one, only such a person can say, "I will not give up preaching the word of truth." Before going to the meaning of the surah, we need to understand one more thing that uh, the relation between the beginning of the Quran and the end of the Quran. Although the Quran has not been arranged chronologically, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam arranged in the present order the verses and the surahs revealed during 23 years on different occasions to meet different needs and situations, not by himself but by the command of Allah subhanahu wa taala who revealed the Quran. According to this order, the Quran opens with the surah Al-Fatiha and ends with ends with Mu'awwadatayn. Now let's have a look at these two other two. In the beginning, after praising and glorifying Allah, who is the Lord of the worlds, Rabbul Alameen, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een, Ikhdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Lord, you alone I worship, and to you alone I turn for help, and the most urgent help that I need from you is to be guided to the straight way. In answer, he is given by Allah the whole Quran to show him the straight way, which is concluded thus, man prays to Allah, who is the Lord of Dawn, Kulav Rabbil Falak, Min Sharri Mahalak, as well as Kulav Rabbil Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahi Nas, and the Lord of Man, King of Man, the real deity of men, saying, I seek refuge only with you for protection from every evil and mischief of every creature. And in particular, from the evil whisperings of devils, be they from among men or jinn, for they are the greatest obstacle in following the straight way. The relation that, the relation that begins bear with the end cannot remain hidden from anyone who has understanding and insight. Let us enter to the surah. Kul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahi nas. I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind. Malikin nas, the king of mankind. Ilahi nas, the true God of mankind. The word ilah has been used in two meanings in the Quran. First for the thing or a person who is practically being worshipped, although he is not entitled to worship. The second meaning, for him who is entitled to worship, who is in fact the deity, whether the people worship him or not. Wherever the word ilah is used for Allah, it has been used in the second meaning throughout the Quran. Min sharril uswasil khannas, from the mischief of the whispering, at least you prompter who returns again and again. The word waswas means the one who whispers over and over again and waswasa means to whisper into someone's heart an evil, an evil suggestion over and over again in such a way or ways that the one who is being inspired may not feel that the whisperer is whispering an evil suggestion into his heart. Man is not tempted by just one attempt, but effort has to be made over and over again to seduce him and tempt him. Such all attempt is called was 
and the tempter Oswas. As for the word Khannas, it is derived from Khunus, which means to hide after appearing and to retreat after coming into view. <coughs> the whisperer has to approach man for whispering again and again and besides he is, he is also describes as Khannas. The combination of the two words by itself gives the meaning that after whispering once he retreats and then again returns over and over again to repeat the act of whispering. In other words, when once he fails in his attempt to whisper evil, he withdraws, then he again returns to make the second and the third and the next attempt over and over again. After understanding the meaning of Vaswas al khannas let us consider what is meant by seeking refuge from its evil. Its one meaning is that the seeker after refuge himself seeks God's refuge from its evil. From the evil lest it should whisper some evil suggestion into his own heart. The second meaning is that the call or the, the person who is calling people to the truth of Allah seeks Allah's refuge from the evil of the one who whispers evil suggestions into the hearts of the people against himself. It is not in his power to approach each and every person in whose hearts evil suggestions are being whispered against himself and remove the misunderstandings of every person. It is also not right and proper for him that he should, have, he should give up his mission of inviting others to Allah and should devote all his time and energy to removing the misunderstanding created by the whisperers and to answering their accusations and allegations. It is also below his dignity that he should not and he cannot come down to the level of his opponents. Therefore Allah has instructed a Muslim, a person who is calling the people to Allah's truth to seek only his refuge from the evil of the wicked people and then to attend single-mindedly to his work of inviting the people and invitation and his mission. The order and the sequence of evil of the whisperers we need to understand. They inside want to open disbelief or kufr or shirk or in, uh, in, into some innovations. If they fail, then they tempt him and they, they, in, they create a feeling that there is no harm in indulging in minor sins. If they, if he, if he, if he could not succeed, then he try, uh, he make an, another attempt that he should, one should not keep the true Islam confined to one oneself. Uh, uh, they, they, they don't need to propagate among the people, but, they, but he need to uh, keep his belief into his own self. But if a person defeats all these plans. The whole party of the devils from among men and jinn makes a common front against him, incites and, and stirs up the people and makes them shower him with in, in, in invective, in uh, a different accusation and slander and defames him as widely as it can. Then Shaitan comes to the believer and excites him into anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if he succeed if he succeed in escaping from these two shaitan becomes powerless before him because Allah asked him to say if shaitan ever excites you to anger seek refuge with Allah so Prophet was asked to tell I seek refuge from the uh, Lord of men and the King of men and the real deity of men from all sorts of problems around me. In this connection another thing we need to understand that 
Evil such as an is not whispered into the heart of men only from outside by shaitan from among men and jinn but also by the uh, by ourselves our inner desires of man from within his own wrong theories misguide his intellect his own unlawful motives and desires lead his power of discrimination will and power of judgment astray and it is not only the shaitan from outside but within uh, within his uh, within uh, within ourselves that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to seek refuge from all sort of evil whispering whispering من الجنة والناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس from all sort of whispering who whispers into the hearts of people from among men whether he may he be from the jinn or human being the actual meaning of jinn is hidden creation and jinn is called jinn because he is hidden from man's eye on the contrary the words nas and ins are spoken for insan which means man only on the basis that he is manifest and visible and perceptible may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the readiness and opportunity wherever the situations comes adverse situation comes in front of us to seek refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect from all sorts of evil whisperings wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum